Hello and welcome to a Duna test mission. I conducted this test at the start of my Twitch livestream on May the 2nd because a viewer had asked for advice about doing a crude landing on Duna in version 1.0.2 the previous day. I chose to do the test in sandbox mode because my career mode progress wasn't up to the point where I could launch a Duna mission and I also wanted some buffer and possibly to quick save if things went wrong. With that, let's turn to my live commentary from May the 2nd. So, I am going to begin a Duna test mission. We're not going to be doing career mode at the start of this. I'm just going to do some testing because somebody requested it. Two flights in progress. Um, I don't even remember what those are. Okay. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Nothing important. And actually, if we're going to do a Duna test mission, I should time warp to when we get a Duna encounter. Just waiting until it's about 45 degrees here. Never particularly good at estimating angles. Um, that seems about right. Okay, so we are set up for a Duna transfer. First thing, obviously, to get the phase angle right. Okay, so I've got two possible Duna... Duna mission articles. One barely barely serviceable and another I'm a little bit more confident in. So here we have Duna Candidate 1 which is a minimal mission barely able to potentially get there. Possibly not enough thrust to weight ratio in the center stack. So I'm not going to this this I'm probably going to try out on my own sometime, but I'm probably not going to try it here. Because this will take some extra concentration to make sure it works. But, yep, this is a possibility. But I'm going to go for something a little bit more robust. So this is Duna Candidate 2. And you'll notice no fairing, and that's something I want to try out. I want to see if it works out without a fairing. We are in uh, 1.0.2 right now. And so, one thing I wanted to do, I forgot to do before, was to action group the solar panels. This is obviously a Duna landing and return mission. So we're trying to get a Kerbal to the surface of Duna and return that Kerbal safely to Kerbin. So it's a little bit tricky. But among the things I want to try out is A, uh, launching something like this without a fairing. B, uh, this launcher which I configured. It's a single mainsail at the bottom. It's a one mainsail SSTO recoverable launcher in theory. Now it won't be able to get back to the KSC it actually won't be able to get to orbit uh, on this mission because the payload's too heavy. We are actually carrying a, a 12 ton payload I believe and the capacity for this launch is about 10 tons to orbit. So it's overloaded and that means that it's going to be suborbital by the time it has to release the mission and come back down and we'll have to use some of this stage in order to get to orbit and the goal is to minimize how much of that stage I use by my calculations it's an LV-909 here and I think this top lander has uh, 3000 delta V or thereabouts so that's quite a lot we have drag shoots just in case but uh, I don't know how well that will work, that will work out on Duna I think we can dump some of the blader uh, here too I am uh, relying on this portion here to be our heat shielding for Duna. As we air brake around Duna I'm trusting that this is going to keep us safe. Much like we've been air braking around Kerbin, we air brake around Kerbin and uh, we see that around 30 kilometers it's pretty safe uh, even without a heat shield and in general it's pretty safe too. Now for crew I guess, guess we'll have Valentina try it out. Usually we have Jeb do the first uh, Duna flag planting. Now this is sandbox. I could have made a bigger launcher, obviously. Uh, but I want to try this out uh, because this will be a launcher for other missions in my sandbox EDB series. So, uh, assuming that testing goes right for this launcher, I'm going to be using it for that series. Now, staging seems to be a bit off because this is a sub-assembly that I put on here. Uh, let me fix that quickly. Okay. Let's take out the launch pad and see how it works. Alright, uh, Valentina is ready to go it looks like and so we'll, we're gonna try this launcher and see if it can come back down safely, that's the main thing. Uh, aside from of course the Duna part of all this. Alright, here we go. 
Well, very graceful rise so far. I expect there'll be some shaking. This isn't the best joint in the world right here. But the fairings are way too heavy. That's, that's my problem. Um, the fairings would make this... The payload capacity of this would be way lower if I had to put a fairing on top of this. We're talking about uh, reducing the payload capacity by like, uh, you know, one and a half to two tons. I've been trying out various launch profiles. This launcher has very low thrust to weight ratio. So we will have to be very careful and tend to turn slower than otherwise necessary. Okay, deviating a lot. I don't need to be... Come on, come on. It's shaking a lot. But it's not too bad. This is going alright. We all re are relearning the arrow right now, yeah. Okay, let's go to 20. Seems a bit shake. Let me go to half throttle here. We don't need full throttle right now. Flips several times. Yeah, I haven't had that much problem. All I do, because I just follow the prograde vector down. I mean, you see me do it, and uh, of course I flip so often in uh, 1.0 that now I don't want to deviate it at all. I'm very cautious now after all that. Okay, how much does this stage have left? We'll, we'll just uh, finish up this stage. Okay, uh, actually, you know what, I shouldn't, uh, no, 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 let's not retrograde. I should uh, separate the mission first, then retrograde. Hold on there, buddy. Okay, uh, stabilize and separate. All right. I'll let that wait for a bit. Now, this one I want to have retrograde. So that it can come back down properly. And again, it's meant to come back down to the KSC, obviously, but this was an extra heavy load. So, and for those just joining, this is sandbox mode. So, yeah, just be aware. The new physics, uh, it didn't take me long. I just had to uh, do one flight with the GB. Uh, if you saw my first sandbox EDB series episode with my little plane, my little SSTO. Uh, once I saw what happened with that, I, I pretty much figured out what the new physics was like. Because, and then I didn't make orbit that first time, but then the second time I made orbit, so it's fine. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with Duna, so that's what I'm doing right now. Now, if we end up killing Valentina, remember, this is a test mission, right? This is a simulation, if you will. Actually, probably multiple simulations. You can't even land it. Well, I mean, landing planes, I have some experience in that, uh, in that area. Okay, we'll leave the mission here. Let me switch back to our stage that is re uh, returning back into the atmosphere. You plan to get further on this update, though? Yeah, well, I certainly hope so. We don't want to get stuck just in the Kerbin system with Moon and Minmus. No. Kerbals are meant to explore far and wide. Okay, so this is my test of this particular thing. You see we're out of fuel, so I can't use the fuel to slow down. It's got 24 parachutes, and the question is basically whether it can survive this kind of return. It's pretty close to orbital velocity. It's just about 200 shy of that. And I, I'll if we hit the water, I'll see whether it can survive a water landing. If we hit land, I'll see whether it can survive that. Um, you can see it's got air brakes. And that, but that's mainly so that it could potentially hit the KSC, carrying a lesser load than it was this time. 
right now I don't anticipate using the air brakes. I do think I'm going to go with retrograde here. Uh, it's got one of the big controllers, this remote guidance unit. Again, this is sandbox, folks. This is not career. I'm at a request. I'm just trying out the Duna mission. Well, SpaceX is trying to land on the barge. I, I don't even care why I hit. Yeah, I'm going to play career today. But somebody yesterday asked if I could do a Duna mission, so I'm gonna try out a Duna mission. I've just launched it, and so I'm gonna... I mean, it depends how long this takes, of course. I still got a video to edit. I've got uh, the video that's supposed to go up today, later, uh, for the Hard Time series. I have to do some editing on. So, no heat shields on the bottom of this. It's just the engine and the uh, bottom of the tanks. And it's pretty much like point nine zero as far as being able to get back down. So let's see if this thing can survive a water landing. Can it remain upright? Well, so far the whole streaming thing is going well. Yep. And it's just a matter of I wonder how complicated I can make these missions before I totally fail <laughs> because I'm talking and paying attention to chat. We'll see. Okay, moment of truth. Looks good. Looks very good. It's auto saving and everything. Let's recover this. So I think we have a good retrievable launcher. I mean, of course, getting it back to KSC would be a trick. Oh, it didn't come up with a dialogue. Oh, well, this is Sandbox. Of course it won't. Okay, let's go back to our main mission. Here to thank me for the tutorial series. Well, thank you for watching. I'm glad they, they were of some help. Uh, I'm not particularly good at making tutorials, honestly. Uh, there are others who are superb at that sort of thing, but I'm glad my little tutorials did work out for some people. Let's orient ourselves properly. Add my maneuver. Hmm. Sorry, this is this is one of the more tedious parts of Kerbal Space Program. This is gonna cost a little bit more. How's the experience of streaming so far and interacting with viewers? It's it's okay. I mean, I'm used to constantly talking during my videos anyway. Uh, it, it just gives me something to talk about. Sometimes in my videos I'm a lot at a loss for what to say. So I guess it's a, sort of a topic prompt. Just care... Ah. Carefully. Let, let's go for 18,000 for now. I can tweak it a little bit better as we get on with it. Let me make sure that we're not like re-entering the atmosphere any, uh, or anything because we're... No, we should be fine. Sometimes when you have a weird trajectory like this instead of going straight out you might accidentally hit the atmosphere again if you're in a low orbit. Okay, the question is whether this stage can do all of it, or whether we're going to have to use some of our lander stage in order to make it. Remember, since we are trying to aero break, I would like to keep this stage in order to shield us. That was the plan. The plan was to keep this, uh, this stage in order to shield us. If it turns out we have to dump this stage, we're in a little bit more of a pickle, because the batteries and all the stuff on the top are likely to overheat. Yeah, ran out just a little bit short. Okay. Well, we have to dump this stage. That's going to cause a bit of a heating issue. That ah, totally off. Okay, uh, I need to make an adjustment. Let's see what's really going on. Uh, okay, that's not what it's showing. Ah, what happened? Okay, I got fooled. Okay, we'll keep it to 3,600. Alright, enough of this. Let us exit the Kerbin system and proceed on to Duna. What? what? Don't do that. 
his first time using warp here. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, before warp here we had 3,000 kilometers. Now we have 10,000. Not too sure I'm a big fan of warp here now. What does that say? Oh, I can counter. Ha ha. Figures. It seems to have like a Kerbal Joint Reinforcement pause kind of thing going. Oh, I've got it on uh, Kerbin time. That was confusing me. I usually play with Earth time. Uh, whatever. I'll just leave it be. I have to remember to watch that because that's going to change how I do things in, in career mode too. Alright, so we are going like that. I guess I can just do a... Uh, okay, well, okay, add maneuver. So, uh, how about you guys give some input. What altitude do you want to test at? Now, if I recall, Duna, old Duna, 0.9, we used to go at 12, uh, 12 kilometers. So I'm gonna set it to 12 kilometers, but uh, your thoughts? Moon's orbital altitude, you can orbit uh, Oh, uh, you mean Ike's? Ike's orbital altitude is uh, 2,971 kilometers, and it's it's pretty much pretty much circular, I think, pretty close. 11 and 13. Yeah, so I'll I'll go with uh, before we do this burn out F5, and uh, we'll aim for 12. Okay. That's good enough for me. Used to go at 10 kilometers. Well, it depends. I mean, I want to get into orbit before uh, dropping down to the surface. So, uh, I don't want to end up on the surface on the first pass. So, that's the thing. We'll see. Okay, so uh, 11,950. Let's go with that. Okay, Valentina, you know what to do. If the arrow is thinner than that of the old arrow, then maybe somewhere between 9 and 11. Yeah, it's possible. We've got extra fuel, so if necessary, we can get into orbit manually with uh, using thrust. The only thing we can't really recover from is overheating. Okay, we're about at a solar panel retraction point. So let's do that. It does have a Kerbal Joint Reinforcement pause, I swear. It's, uh... Come on. Or is that action group not working now? Hello? Huh. Hold on, hold on. Uh, you guys confirm that there's no way for me to retract the solar panels, right? Uh, I've got... Okay, I'm gonna go to the Space Center quickly and come back and hope that this is alright. Those ones are now... That's what you meant. Oh my god. Okay, so that's what you meant by the non-retractable ones. Ah, see, I didn't, I didn't understand you yesterday properly. Okay, right. We can deal with this, kind of. Maybe. Valentina, you might be stuck on Duna. Do you suppose the solar panels will survive this? No chance on the solar panels. Well, let's go flush retrograde here. We are slowing down. We are now experiencing re-entry heat. Valentina is... Uh, actually, she's looking a little bit incredulous. She's not quite excited. She's she's looking... Uh, she's looking in wonder. Actually, she's... Okay, now she's excited. Just before burns, before running out of charge, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know what? You know, <laughs> we seem to be very intact. On the other hand, we are coming straight down. So, uh, this is bad. Hold on. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. We, we are coming down now. 
So this is way too low. This is not too high. This is too low. And drag shoots, will they work right now or will they rip things apart? I'm gonna still, I'm gonna ignite engines to help slow down here. And drag shoots. Okay. Non retractable, yeah, they didn't mention the non destructible part, did they? Oh, wait, something fell off. Okay, uh, I think we lost a we, we lost a pair. We lost a pair. I'm not taking any chances, obviously. Oh wait! Come on, get down there. Okay, we're down. Who? Duna. Duna is looking all right. We kept two solar panels somehow. Yeah, this is a surprising arrow break. I have to say we definitely learned something about arrow breaking at Duna here. First, heat, not so bad. Um, forget uh, Duna's gravity. It's okay, right? I mean, uh, the the ladder does not seem to extend all the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, so higher than 12 kilometers. Bloop. Okay, planting a flag. Okay, so Valentina on Duna. Let's get today's date. And, uh... First, first uh, Kerbal, what do we call this, excursion? Uh, Kerbal, Kerbal Interplanetary Journey in 1.0, exclamation. Okay, that's that. We don't need to take the science. We are, uh, yeah, you got to be on your toes on the aero brakes sometimes. Now, there's, there's a lot of other questions we've got here, right? How much delta V does it, get back, uh, does it take to get back up? Oh, I should have a repacked uh, drag chutes. Uh, you never know, right? Okay. I'm, I'm, this is just a sandbox. We're not doing the science here right now, uh, Prius. So, uh, we're just testing this out. This is completely a test mission in sandbox. We're just seeing what it takes to get to Duna and back. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, this is the and back part now. And we'll jump jump back into career mode after this. I'm not near to getting to Duna in career mode. Can Duna's atmosphere make you flip out? I hope not. So if you've seen my videos, you recognize this sort of shape of lander, at least. Uh, this sort of lander with the 2 meter tank and then these guys on the side. It's not technically clipped in. Uh, at least it's, it doesn't require part clipping. It just uh, it just works. Don't worry, the electric charge is... Oh, you mean the solar panels. Yeah, the solar panels are gone. Well, I don't need to check my solar panels. We knew they were going to be going, right? I mean, you didn't expect them to actually stay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, I was expecting them to leave on the ascent. That was, that was, that was expected. Don't worry, we're okay. I think. Uh, yep. Without SAS on, it's, uh, it's electric charge neutral. Yeah. LV9, oh no, I, I know very well the LV909 doesn't have an alternator. Been through that on many a mission. Yep, yep, uh, we will keep the maneuvers to a minimum. Uh, yeah, maybe the shape of the craft uh, contributed to the fact that we ended up uh, heading straight down. 
but uh, but if you actually carry carry a, a heat shield with you down to Duna, though I guess we don't really need to, uh, that would be even more serious on the drag. So I don't know. I, it will depend on the shape of your vessel, but I'm assuming most people are not gonna come down pointy end down uh, pointy end down. Most people are not gonna try and be streamlined on try when trying to air brake around. Do not. They're, they're gonna try having. They're gonna, they're gonna have a blunt end, right? They're gonna have something that's going to create a lot of drag. I might want to flatten this out a little bit just for the sake of convenience. I'm sure the shape of things now with the new aerodynamics is gonna play a part in determining how low we have to go for the air brakes. Okay, should be okay. Uh, let me just take SAS off, turn, put SAS back on. This is how it's done with RCS in Realism Overhaul too. Except now I'm not saving RCS fuel, I'm, I'm saving electric charge. Just flattening out a little bit, that's why I'm not pointing at prograde. Okay, that should do it. Let's just stabilizer, and we'll take SAS off. And Valentina is back in space. Let's get to the right phase angle. We need Kerbin to be 75 degrees behind Duna. Okay, here we go. Angle estimation time again. I could pull out the protractor, but I'll just eyeball it. That looks about 75-ish. Okay, back to Valentina. Uh, I think we got again. Okay, we're... how many patch connects do we have in this thing right now? Up, oh, nope, it doesn't show us that part. Okay, well, uh, let's let's go for an orbit in order to avoid the Ike encounter, and then we'll uh, come back around. Oh, that's as much as we can do. Oh no, that's not clear of Ike now. <sighs> Man. Okay, Troll Moon is trolling. How much Delta... Hold on, let me check what Delta V I've got. Because we're spending a lot on this sort of thing. Holy mackerel, we've only got uh, 898 meters per second. Uh, I can't do this. We don't have enough Delta V. It's there, but that's that's all of our Delta V. Um, okay, I want to look at it this way. I have my protractor now. Yeah, it's 80 degrees. I think that's that that's 75. Let's try again. Sorry about this. <laughs> okay, just a little bit more. Probably means I should be waiting. I know this. I know it probably means I should just wait around for a while. Uh, okay, there we go. Alright, let's do the thing where we focus on Kerbin. We really need this burn to work out for us. Check my angles. Inclination problem? I know I have an inclination problem. I've got uh, I've got quite an inclination problem, but I'm reading a possible periapsis of nine nine thousand kilometers now. So so maybe we'll all, we'll be all right. Yeah, I know, I know, but I don't have enough delta v to correct the the angle. I don't have enough delta V to uh, adjust this orbit into a incl uh, flat inclination. That's that's not going to be a thing. Yeah, I know it's a problem. No, I mean, you remember on the way up I tried to flatten out a little bit, right? But I couldn't do very much. I'm not even looking at my fuel right now. Mm 
moon encounter. Uh... Okay, that's going up now. Okay. Alright. Uh, let's get out of Duna Sphere of Influence before adjusting this any further. Okay. Out you go, Valentina. Departing your first great achievement. The home and transfer that I've been attempting is the most efficient thing assuming that the inclinations of the orbits are the same and the orbits are circular. So those are two big assumptions that aren't always true. So that that's what makes it complicated sometimes. Uh, now you see here I've got, a, I've got an inclination of 4.1 with respect to Kerbin and that's what's causing me the problems but I've got it uh, hitting at the descending node on the other side so that's part of the key to why this worked eventually and also why I didn't wait around okay so let's say I want to fix things up a little bit more we really need to get Valentina into the atmosphere here too far Kerbal alarm clock me, why don't you? I should have done time warp to here or something like that. I, I'm not entirely trusting in that. Okay, that's probably too low, but we'll wait till we get to Kerbin SOI to fix it. Okay, see, plenty of fuel, plenty of fuel. I don't know what you guys are worried about. <laughs> okay. I think the other one, I had the mission, uh, Duna Candidate 1, that wouldn't have made it. That would not have made it. Not with the way we had to slow down to land on Duna. If we could have parachuted down on the way, it might have. Wonder what Valentina thinks. Are you kidding me? You know what Valentina thinks. She thinks it's just great. She thinks this is all right. That might be all right. Let's see how that works out for us. Whoa, there you go. You wonder what Valentina thinks? That's what Valentina thinks. Want to put drogue shoots on a stage? Eh, you know, we're probably going to ditch this part anyway. I guess we can. Probably won't make too much of a difference. Yeah, right. That's not Valentina losing her mind. You know what? Valentina losing her mind would be if she suddenly got serious. Then, then we'd know she had lost it. Okay. I don't know whether we can keep the keep the service module on arrow breaking or not. Actually, you know what? Uh, I didn't uh, get to use my previous quick save, so. I'm going to quick save here just in case. Come on. You can do it, little computer. My poor computer has been working hard today and it's very hot in my room right now. Let's actually, uh, yeah, temperature overlay. Probably important anyway. But uh, interesting how the the light on top of the battery is glowing yellow hot right now also the ladder now the ladder worries me a bit oh the ladder is actually overheating it's got that overheating indicator do you think i'll land on the sunny side maybe i don't think the fuel lines don't seem to have any heating on them okay that's orbit that's the change of camera. Oh crud. I can't do anything about the ladder. The ladder is just gonna be there. Watching me live is a hundred times better than on YouTube. Well, not everybody has the time to watch hours and hours of Twitch though. Okay, okay, that's a camera change. Is it? 
I think so. But we're not going down to the surface yet. We're not suborbital. I wonder what that was all about. We're about to be suborbital, though. The, the atmosphere has gotten a lot thicker now. The atmospheres are all a lot thicker now. And now now we're, we're headed down. Yeah, I'm worried about the ladder and the pod. Yeah, I notice most people on YouTube, even even subscribers, uh, they only watch like 12-15 minutes of each video. And so I'm going like, yeah, well, of course I, I'm a bit long-winded on YouTube, but you gotta figure, uh, YouTube is sort of a different thing. It's like, uh, it, it's definitely for people who want uh, quick, quick entertainment. Uh, what would happen if I overheat and explode, right? The stuff explodes now in Kerbal Space Program when we overheat. But it looks like we, we were all right. Now, it's the what terrain are we over question. Yeah, stuff explodes now. Well, we've got more little overheating markers. These little markers here indicate overheating. In this case, uh, it's the leftover so uh, end of the solar panels for some reason. Well, I guess we can bring it all down together and we can recover it all. Not that we're in career mode and it matters, but... But if we ever use this for career mode, we now know that this thing can survive through re-entry from Duna and we can bring it down safely. As strange as that is. Yeah, still no air break into orbit but straight into landing. Yeah, the, the atmosphere is a lot thicker now than it was in 1.0. Oh yeah, well don't expect any logic about things exploding in Kerbal Space Program, Sisha. Uh, let's face it, uh, we, we had tremendous explosions of a runway, if you recall, in... Uh, it was was it, it was point nine zero, right? Or was it point two five that introduced runway explosions? I think it was point nine zero. Runway explosions. I don't know how concrete explodes, but yeah, that was a bit weird. Uh, we seem to be going down pretty fast. I'm wondering if we should ditch the rest of it. Yeah, this is not... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Let's just go with the pod. Oop! Uh, okay, that was weird. Valentina, you safe there? Let's recover you. Okay, well, Valentina's back. Let's go back to career. Yeah, I think we've done our testing for today.